a follow-up video to the solid tube series or STS telescope collimation video uh, that we did the other day. I just wanted to give you guys a little bit more of an in-depth look through the sight tube uh, that we were talking about earlier from cat's eye collimation uh, to give you an idea of what you might be seeing through the sight tube into the telescope and help you sort of diagnose uh, what you're seeing and then how to proceed from there. So what we're going to take a look at first is a look into the sight tube now of a properly collimated telescope. I'm holding in my hand here uh, the cat's eye collimation 2 inch sight tube uh, with a set of crosshairs there in the bottom. Uh, we're going to take that and load that here into the focuser of this telescope. And we're going to load it in until it seats fully and then tighten up the two thumb screws. Here we go. And now we're going to take the camera and go right up to the uh, sight tube view here. We're going to take a look and see what we see, which is a properly collimated uh, solid tube series telescope. So in the end, uh, when you're done collimating, uh, this is essentially what you want the view to look like. Uh, you want everything to be concentric. Uh, you want the crosshairs to be centered on both the center spot, or the reflection of it, uh, on your primary mirror, and you want the crosshair centered essentially on the black um, circle created by the shadow of your secondary mirror on the primary mirror. And you want everything to be, uh, like I said, concentric. You want the inside diameter of the sight tube itself uh, to be lined up with the outside diameter of the secondary mirror, the reflective surface. You want those two rings uh, to be concentric. And then you want the primary mirror reflection to be centered in the secondary mirror reflection. And so hopefully you can follow all that. So basically this is what you want it to look like. Uh, in most cases, when you first get your solitude series telescope, it will not look like this. So uh, we're going to cut away. I'm going to decollimate the telescope, take it out of proper collimation. Uh, and then we're going to come back and discuss how to get it into proper collimation uh, just by looking through the sight tube here. So here we are. We're going to take a look here through the sight tube and see a decollimated or miscollimated telescope here. Obviously, it doesn't look like how we had it previously. So we have to do some things here to realign the secondary mirror. All right, in most cases, that will be where the biggest error is in your secondary mirror because uh, it may have rotated during shipping. Um, you know, or it may just have gotten uh, jostled around, vibrated, turned, um, rotated, like I mentioned, uh, or tipped and tilt, tilted in, in the wrong direction. So we're going to try to correct that here. So what we can start doing, first things first, is uh, you can see my reflection of my hand in the mirror. I'm now going to turn the three collimation knobs on the skyward side of the secondary mirror. All right, so I'm going to keep turning them. All right, here we go. We're going to turn them, turn them, turn them. All right, until we get the secondary mirror closer to collimation, which basically means we just want to be able to see the full primary mirror. Here we go. We're going to get it right like that, turn in some of the bolts. Um, you may also find that you need to rotate the secondary mirror and the holder as well. Uh, in this case, not so much. Uh, you would only need to do that if the uh, view through the sight tube here, right? Actually, we can see that there's a little bit more space on the bottom than the top. In this case, that means we want to rotate the secondary mirror just a little bit. And again, we can just grab it and turn it. And now we want to keep collimating, keep turning those bolts on the skyward side. Turn them, turn them, turn them. Keep popping back and forth between all three. All right, and now we can see that the reflection of the primary is roughly centered in the secondary. There we go. Okay. So now we want to do, we want to step back and take a look here. Is the, or are the crosshairs, I should say, centered on the center spot? Not really. Not as good as it was before. Right? We're a little bit off center. We've still got more space on the bottom of the secondary mirror than on the top. So more white space on the bottom than the top. So that means we want to rotate the secondary mirror again. Rotate it. And that was arbitrary. You could rotate it toward you or away from you. You just have to rotate it, recolumnate, and see what it, what it gives you and where you end up. All right. If it ends up getting worse, you want to rotate the mirror in the other direction. Right. Here we go. So now we've got a lot more space, or a lot more even space, I should say, on the top and the bottom of the secondary mirror. 
We've also got even space on the left side and on the right side. And the crosshairs are now centered on your center spot. They're more centered on the secondary mirror. And at this point, we could stop using the sight tube, and it's now advisable to jump to the laser collimator tool to get a more refined collimation. But at this point, you've now taken your secondary mirror, which is grossly out of collimation when we started this uh, just three minutes ago, to now to the point where it's back into very, very close collimation. And we would follow up then, like I said, with the laser. Uh, but at this point, uh, you're good. Uh, secondary mirror is rotated properly. It looks like it's very close to collimation. And we can go ahead and proceed uh, with the more refining tools after this. Um, and for that, I would recommend uh, going back to the previous video uh, that we did. All right, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Thank you.